Welcome to this uh, lecture. My name is Tor Bündelén and I'm the head of Stockholm China Center. Uh, we organize two series of lectures this year. One we call the China Lecture Series and one Taiwan Lecture Series. And today's lecture is uh, one of the Ch uh, Taiwan Lecture Series. Uh, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you today's speaker, Mr. Teng Jian Go, Go Teng Jian, uh, who comes from Taiwan, but who has been living in Sweden for the past 10 years. Uh, Mr. Um, Go was born and grew up in the city of Taichung in, in Taiwan and studied English and literature at National Taiwan University. But he has and now become a specialist in Swedish and he holds an MA degree in translation from Stockholm University. And uh, he is really fluent in, in Swedish to the extent that I think he would have preferred even to, to give this lecture in Swedish rather than in, in English. Uh, in Sweden, he works both as an interpreter and as a literary translator, mainly from Sweden, Swedish, but also from Norwegian and English into Chinese. He is a literary translator, but he has also translated other works. Uh, for instance, writings by uh, Professor Hans Rosling and Jostein Gorder. And Jostein Gorder, uh, I think you translated directly from Norwegian, which is also very nice to know. The title of your presentation of Mr. Goh's presentation today is a genres of translation of Swedish literature in Taiwan, the past, the present and predictions. We are very much looking forward to, to your talk. And, and again, I wish you so very well, most welcome. Uh, the floor is yours, Mr. Goh. Thank you, Topion. And uh, well, dear listeners and ladies and gentlemen, thank you for taking your time and joining us in this session about translated Swedish literature in Taiwan. Yeah, we will go through some statistics. Yeah, during yeah, from nineteen from the year of nineteen fifty to to now, and we will also try to make some analysis based on the available data and statistics. So here is the agenda for today. First of all, we will give we will give some brief definitions and criteria about a bit which line behind the statistics. And secondly, we will go through the statistics from 1950 to 2008. Thirdly, we will analyze, we will an, an analyze translation as an intercultural phenomenon and try to localize or find out the factors or contributing actors behind this process. The fourth point on the agenda will be a look at the more the, at the present statistics, which refers to numbers from 1999 to last year, 2021. And the fifth point is, yeah, is actually the core of the yeah, of this session. Try to trying to find out the tendencies in translated Swedish student literature in Taiwan. And the final point on the agenda is predictions about the next five coming years. Yeah. So first of all, we have to give a definition about Swedish liter Swedish literature in Taiwan. So yeah, there may be some basic ideas. For instance, yeah. If we should focus on the author's place of birth or the languages which the author uses when she or he writes. And secondly, the target language of the translation. Thirdly, the genres. That is, yeah, whether we should whether we should broaden our spectrum in yeah by, by looking at both fictions or non-fictions, or we should only feel or if, or if we should only focus on fictions or literary works. And the fourth point is the source language chosen in, chosen in the translation projects in question. Yeah, for, for instance, if the, work, if the work is directly translated from Swedish or if the original 
English translation has been chosen as the, as the material for the translations in question. So yeah, we will try to map out, map, map out all these points in the next slide. So yeah, here we have a clear, yeah, we, we have we have a we have a we we can give a clear look at the criteria. In terms of the genres, the works being chosen and selected include both non-fictions and uh, fictions. And in terms of yeah, in, in terms of the yeah, in terms of the, um, the, the source the source language. We will form. We will mainly choose in Swedish as, as the as the authors, the, the authors um, language of language of origin, and uh, the the place of birth or the place of residence of the author will only have secondary importance here. The easiest example may be Tove Jonsson. Yeah, as many as as you know, Tove Jonsson nationality is Finnish, but the, the theme is that she writes and she composes in Swedish. So her work will be included in yeah, when, when, we, when we go through the statistics about published and translated entries uh, of Swedish children books in Taiwan. And thirdly, in terms of target language, we will we will focus on the translations into traditional Chinese. Maybe many of us will maybe maybe many of us will think that think it to be natural that the translations in Taiwan will mostly be done into traditional Chinese. Yeah, this is mostly the case. But we have also to be aware of that there may be uh, there may be other target languages. Available in Taiwan. For instance, if a Swedish book, if a Swedish book is translated into English or simplified Chinese, and such translations may also be available in Taiwan. So in this, so the case is actually a bit more tricky and complicated than our imagination. But here in the session, we will define target language as traditional Chinese. And certainly, and, and here, yeah, there will be a there will be some creative criteria for the statistics. Yeah. yeah. First of all, in terms of anthology, we refer to a collection of works written and composed by different authors. And because yeah, because such works combined are written by different authors. There is no continuity of plot in, in plot or storyline in the anthologies. Secondly, book series. Yeah, that refers to novels written by the same author and with continuity in storyline and plot, and mo in most cases also with the main with the same main characters. Thirdly, the compilations. Compilation may refer to a collection of works written by the same author, but more in most cases, stories in the in the compilation do not share continuity in storyline and plot, and they in most cases do not have the same main characters either. Fourthly, trilogy. This is clear. Three novels written by the same author, and uh, yeah, share the continuity in storylines and plot. And the fifth, single books, yeah, separated books written by yeah, written by the same author. And lastly, repeated editions. So yeah. And here we, yeah, we, yeah. In terms of the statistics, there will be some, there will be some statistics that, can, that simultaneously just post the, yeah, the different the, the statistics about different genres. In this case, we will only take the definition of single books into consideration. Yeah. In other words. 
for, for instance, if we examine a statistics that include the, publica the, pub the published translations of different genres, such as detective novels, children books, pure novels, or other categories, then in this case, we will only take, we will only count in the numbers of published single books. We will, in this case, exclude the publications of anthologies, compilations, trilogies, or book series. But if we move into the statistics about, about certain men and specific genres, for instance, if we examine the published entries of children books during a certain period of time, then we will, we will count in the publication, the number of publications of anthologies, trilogies, compilations, and book series. So yeah, first of all, we have a more, we, have, we have a broader chart here about the yeah, about the past, the period from 1950 to 2008. Yeah. So yeah, that, that this ranking this ranking gives us a look about the about the countries of origins of the translated literature in Taiwan, but they do not but they do not specify the which kind which which kind of source languages that, that is involved in the yeah in the translations. So you can see that most of the translated works come from English speaking countries. And here on the screen, CE refers to Central Europe. And on the eighth point, America refers to Canada and all other countries in Latin America and Central America, but excludes USA because it's already, USA is already represented at point one. And the, more, and, the nice, and the nice place, the modern Western world refers to authors, the first works written by authors who are difficult or even impossible to define or identify. And here on the tenth point, we have Scandinavia, yeah, including the five Nordic countries. Yeah. So yeah. And in yeah, if we take a closer look at the statistics from 1950 to 2008, we will we can reach the conclusion that there are three main categories that most frequently become translated into traditional Chinese written by Swedish or Nordic authors. Yeah, the three categories are children literature, classical literature or, or novels, and uh, crime or detective novels. And uh, uh, yeah, in, in the following two slides, we will give a, we will ha have a look at which authors who are the most often translated and published. Here we have the upper part of the chart. As you can see, yeah, the yeah, in in the in, in this period, the most the most frequently published and translated authors compose um, classic classical literature and uh, children literature. Like Tova Young, no, the, the, the authors in children literature include Tova Young Song, Hans, Hans, Hans Anderson, and uh, Austrian, Austrian Great. Yeah. And here, the second half of the chat regarding regarding period from 1950 to 2008. Here you we here we can see some authors read, read some authors writing criminal or detective novels, such as Han Henny Mankell, 
nine hu vow a pair of uh, a, 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 a pair of authors yeah and all and still the writers of student literature are still represented here yeah like Austin Green so yeah here we will yeah we will we will briefly go through the main factors or the, the main reasons that make a certain genre or books being translated translation is in itself an intercultural phenomenon so it it involves several actors and factors for in yeah a a book that has that is translated has first to be noticed and uh, recognized first in the countries where the source languages are used, in this case, Swedish. And by means of some mediations, it will be also or it will also first be noticed and observed by members or by the actors in in the countries where the target languages are used, in this case, Taiwan and the traditional Chinese. So first of all, we can take a look at the, at the main forces that define which kind of literature or which authors will be translated and selected. Yeah, the first category here is the, the opinion makers or the establishments. This category includes national or international literature prizes. For instance, yeah, for instance, yeah, no Nobel Prize or International Booker Prize, or or a, or a Booker Prize that is for the English writing authors. Yeah, and we have also be aware of the fact that other genres can, apart from novels, can also have their own prizes. For instance, prizes for children literature or prizes or awards that are reserved for detective or criminal novels. For instance, yeah, the, yeah, for instance, the most one of the most famous Prizes for children literature is Austria's Austria Lindgren Memorial Award. So yeah, by yeah in yeah the the books being awarded under such circumstances will stand a better chance to be introduced to overseas and to become translated. Yeah. Secondly, cultural policies also have a role to play in the in the, in the making of opinions. Yeah. For instance, in some Nordic countries, including Norway and Sweden, there are specific governmental agencies that give subsidies to publishing houses, which, yeah, which which which, intro, which introduces and uh, help the completion of translated projects. So this, in 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 this case, we can say that. Cultural policies have a positive and contributing influence on, on the translation projects. And thirdly, we also have international book fairs. Yeah. For instance, the most famous, one of the most famous and important international exhib ex exhibitions in Taiwan may be regarded as Taipei International Fair, while in Europe, we have Frankfurt International Fair. And in Sweden, one of the most important and famous international fairs may be regarded as Gothenburg Book Fair, which takes place in September every year. Yeah. And here in the in second category here, we have, yeah, we have we we have the spreaders in culture and industry. First of all, we have the mainstream media, either on internet or in newspapers. And secondly, in institutions of higher education, for instance, departments of department for comparative literature or children literature or 
their literature. Thirdly, we also have libraries on different levels, such as the national or municipal libraries. And fourthly, there are also main, there are also national or international workshops. Yeah. So by means, yeah, we we can turn such factors as spreaders because they they make they make sure that the canons or the, the books being selected by literature prices and uh, international book fairs will further be spread and studied by the, by the general public. Yeah, in this case, the spreaders help to increase the canon's visibility and publicity. And thirdly, we have, yeah, in the, yeah we have also ex executors in, ter yeah, in terms of a delivery, like the publishing houses, yeah. On the previous slide, we examined the organizations and uh, institutions. And here, we also have factors on another level, which refers to the individuals, in individuals of importance. First of all, the authors, yeah. And nowadays, the authors not only write the original, the originals, but there may also be there may also be some more active authors who actively contact international copyright agencies in order to look for the chances for their own works to be translated into other languages. Secondly, the editors in the publishing houses. And thirdly, copyright agencies or agents. The agents are mostly active in international affairs, the, the occasions for, yeah, for, the, for, the, for the literature to be introduced and to be seen by actors from the, from the, yeah, from, from the countries where the target languages are used. And fourthly, professors employed in institutions such as Department for Comparative Literatures or Literatures in universities or colleagues. And lastly, we have translators here. So now we are going, yeah, we are going to move on to statistics about, about the more about the more recent past and up to now from 1999 to 2021. And yeah, the yeah, the, the, the data that I collected comes from one of the one of the major sites for book selling, www.books.com. Yeah. This, yeah, I we have I have to admit that the databases on this on this website still has still has the possibility to be better organized. But because it is one of the most available and most direct databases, I choose to use them as the under under as the framework. Yeah. So first we have the statistics collected from books.com.tw books about the yeah, about the about the published and translated Swedish literatures in within fictions and balanced letters. Yeah, you can see that um, detective detective novels account account for the lion's share in this section. While yeah, you see that um, in under the category of poetry, there are only two published entries during this period, and the 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 poet the poet the poetry published here are written by the winner of Nobel Prize in two thousand eleven. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, Tom, Thomas Trons, 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 Trons. So this explains that um, in certain categories, only the, only the authors that have received the highest level of recognitions 
will, will stand the chance to be translated and published into, in, in, into traditional Chinese. And uh, yeah, here we also have we, yeah, we also have other categories, including youth novels and thrillers. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. In in this case, I will, yeah. In this case, I will also briefly go through the origins of translations of detective novels in Taiwan. Yeah. The, yeah, the history of translated detected the, the history of translated detected novels can could be traced back to the early part of 19 the of the of, of the, the early part of the 20th century with the main English and French authors of Conan Doyle and uh, Maurice LeBlanc and the Agas, Agatha Christie. So under such circumstances. The, yeah, it, it actually paves the, the way for Swedish detective, no, detective novels to be translated in, in Taiwan into traditional Chinese. Yeah, because, it, because of the earlier authors in English and uh, French, the, Swedish, the Swedish criminal novels ha have a better chance to be understood and uh, accepted by the readers in Taiwan. So here we have some of the most prominent and conspicuous Swedish authors in, dete in detective novels and criminal novels. Yeah, for, example, for instance, Hanni Mankela, Sig Larsson, and uh, Lager Kranz, who mostly is occupied with the continuation of the Minomian series. Yeah, and and on the lower part of the of the chart, these are the authors that has that have that have been more recently published. In other words, published and translated after 2015. Yeah, for instance, Alexander Söderberg. Yeah. Yeah, and here we also we also we also make we also count in the popular publications in form of compilations and uh, book series because now we are going we are now moving to the the, the statistics we seen a certain genre among different authors so here in a chart we yeah we can see the ten, we can see the curves in the three main categories where most of the translations take place. You can see that the, the, the translations and the publications of Swedish children books reached its climax, climax in the five year period from 2006 to 2010. Afterwards, the numbers of translations in children books have slightly declined, but it's it's still it's it's still smooth, while the public while the number of of translated and published Swedish detective novels gradually increased from two thousand five to two thousand twenty one, and the gap between these two in two thousand twenty one is considerably slimmer. And smaller in comparison with the gap between yeah in comparison with the gap from two thousand six to two thousand ten yeah and uh, the the number of the, the the translations of novels yeah in, in other words the novels by stricter definition has been on a lower level. And here we have a we also have a chat about other minor categories of, of genres of Swedish books being translated into traditional Chinese. Yeah, for instance, books about art subjects or history or self books and uh, general psychology. Yeah, because these minor categories are, are 
numerically marginalized, we will not we, we, we will not make particular comparisons between them. But we still have to note we have we still have to bear in mind these project these these categories. Yeah. So here we have a, we have the statistics within the genre of children books and youth novels. Yeah, among the line, yeah among these sixty one published entries of Swedish children books or youth novels between two, between nineteen ninety nine and two thousand twenty one, it has to be pointed out. It has to be pointed out that the lion's share still goes to the main authors such as Austrian Lindgren and Tova Jungson. But there is also another sub subcategory in this genre, which, re which, which refers to numbers of entries that be in a category of detective novels. This category is still numer numerically not less dominant, but we will Pay some extra attention to this category in the in a in a coming slides first round. Yeah, and here we I also I also listed the categories of translated children books and novels in in simplified Chinese that are that have that are available in Taiwan, but among these third among these thirteen entries. Most of the most of these thirteen entries in in simplified Chinese available in Taiwan are about the wonderful the, the wonderful adventures of Nis, the yeah the masterwork of Silma Lagerlöf. And yeah, here we have some yeah we, we, we can we can see the most frequently translated and pub published Swedish authors of novels into traditional Chinese between 2001 and 2021. So yeah, we, yeah. So we, we can see that Friedrich Bachmann is the more, he has been the most productive authors yeah, in, in these categories. And uh, yeah, and, and he's, and he, apart from apart from his productivities in Swedish, it has also to be pointed out that um, the the acceptance of his works in traditional Chinese has also been relatively high. So yeah, and and in this category, we also have jo we also have Jonas Gadell and uh, S. Stolen Stolen Hawk. So yeah, after yeah after the after these previous statistics, we will now try to do some analysis and uh, have a closer look at the tendencies in translated children books and youth novels from Swedish to traditional Chinese. So yeah, as as has pointed out earlier, the number of published published translations of Swedish children books into traditional Chinese reached its climax from 2006 to 2010. So yeah, it, it may be arguably defined as one of the one of the better 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 time points for this for this genre in traditional Chinese. So here we have some we have some pie tables here, and uh, yeah, we can we can see that the num the numbers of translated children literature children books into traditional Chinese is, yeah, are, are, are a twenty five, and it accounts for forty two percent of the published translations during the study period from. 1999 to 2021. And most of the publications still have to be attributed to the main authors, Oscar Lindgren and the Tova Youngson. Yeah. Yeah. 
And on this slide, I, I would like to point out the authorship and the publications of Selma Lagerlöf in Taiwan, because, yeah, because her authorship and acceptance in Taiwan can help us understand some of the mindsets for the, for the Taiwanese publishers. Yeah. As is known to everybody, Simon Lagerlöf's most famous work is The Wonderful Adventures of Nice. And between 2006 and 2021, this book has been repeatedly published by different Taiwanese publishers. Yeah. Nine Taiwan, no, this has the book had been published by nine different Taiwanese publishers between yeah, during these 15 during these 15 years. And more, moreover, the form of the form of publications of this book is also various. For instance, it had it had been published in book series as the as the original. It's, it has also been rewritten. Re, re in 2021 and it and it also has been it also was published during these 15 years as a part of an anthology so we so yeah we can see that this book received quite received quite a lot preference by the taiwanese publishers but if we further extend other other works written by Selma like love we can see that the Taiwanese publishers do not even do not pay any attention to other works written by her the other books the other book written by Selma like love and has and which has been translated into traditional Chinese is the, is the novel the love and the Love and Hood Ring, translated and published by a Taiwanese publisher in 2003. So we can see that um, the, yeah, the, one of the main tendencies um, and mindsets in Taiwanese public is that they capitalize on the most famous book written by the most famous author, but they, do, they are they are more they are more unlikely to take the risks to try to invest on other on other works written by the written by the same famous author. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that Sima Lagerlöf lifetime has been more distant from for now. But this tendency is something that character, that characterizes quite a few Taiwanese publishers. And now, in this chart on this slide, you can see, yeah, you can you can see the most famous, the, the, you can see the most frequently published children books in yeah children children books writers from translated from Swedish to Chinese from two thousand fourteen to two thousand twenty one, yeah, like Martin Wittmark. And Jacob we Jacob Wehelius and Uf Nielsen and uh, Ingla Kosher and uh, Osa Larson. Yeah. So now we are going to have some Anna, we are going to have a closer look at the translated children books and youth novels from Swedish to Chinese. Yeah. Yeah. In, undoubtedly, these, these books are these, these books belong to the category of children books. But if we have a further examination of the of the book's ingredients, then we can see some of the some, some, we can see some conspicuous tendencies in, in these books. The first noteworthy scene is that is the elements of some crime or detective novels. The second ingredient in, 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 a, in, a, in a group is the coloring of mystery. Thirdly, there are also more 
pictured books or illustrations. We can go back to the previous slide to have a yeah to to check it. Yeah. For yeah, the yeah, the more the more the two the two authors on the on this slide, Martin Widmark and uh, ja Jacob Wehelius, their publication they are translated publications be indeed belong to detective novels, <laughs> belong belong to children novels, indeed. But the main storyline and plot is carried out by detective narratives. So yeah. Compared with the main, compared with the main established and canonized children book authors such as Tobe Youngson and uh, Arthur Lindgren, it's, it's, it, it is something. It is actually something new in something new in the in the genre. Yeah. While yeah yeah while while Arthur, the other pair of Ingela Koshel and Osa Larson. Yeah. The yeah. They are, they, are, they are published translations are the first are the first three books of the series Pax. And this series has its storyline in Marie Fright, a, a, a Swedish town. So in, in a sense, this, this also pairs uh, Kosher and the last one, they, in, they kind of intend to yeah, they, they kind of share the they, they kind of try to in, use, the, use the Swedish landscape in their narratives, just like what Sema Lagerlöf has done in the Wonder Adventures, in the Wonderful Ad Adventures of Nice. But apart from this, the Pax series contains quite a, lot, quite a few mystique, quite a few elements that remind us of mysterious such as Nordic mythologies and uh, some elements of thrillers. So in genre and in form, such books indeed belong to children literature and youth novels. But it has to be pointed out that they, that they do contain the ingredients of crimin criminal novels or detective novels or thrillers. And yeah, so here after going after having after having dealt with the statistics, we can yeah we, we can by the chat try to try yeah try to try to localize the interactions and the boundaries between the main three categories. Yeah. Yeah, the red circle represents children literature. Well, you well, we also have classic literature and uh, detective novels. So the tendencies between two thousand fifty and two thousand eight is that, in terms of numbers of publication translated publications, children literature indeed have indeed has the lion's share, while the well yeah while the gap between children literature and detective novels is still quite clear. And now when we move on further to the more recent past and the, the present, in other words, from 2009 to 2021, we can see that um, the boundary of the, the boundary of thrillers and uh, criminal novels has expanded at the at the expense of true novels, as as I have mentioned earlier. There is a subclass under the in the, within the genre of children literature that gradually has a slight coloring of detective novels or yeah, three thrillers. So they still belong to children literature, but their ingredients, the but their ingredients 
have been more complicated and uh, tricky compared with established and canonized children literature authors. Well, we can also see that the green circle, which represents the published translations of classic literature, has been yeah ha, ha, has been smaller. So apart from yeah, so have so having examined the pre, the past and the present, now we are going to yeah. Now I'm trying to make a cautious a, a cautious prediction. You can see on this in this chat in this chart that um, the yeah the circle rep representing the detective detective novels and criminal novels will be yeah will be expanding which which also which also implies that maybe more more of the children literature in a forthcoming five year long period from 2012 to 2000 yeah, from 2022 to 2026 more, more probably more of the published children literatures will have a coloring of detective of detective novels yeah while yeah while, while the conditions of the translations of classic literature in other words pure novels will yeah compare with these two bigger genres still be lying at a relatively low level yeah yeah so here is a yeah here we are other, other sources and uh, materials that i have based the that, that i that i have used as the groundwork for this for this ana for this analysis and uh, the statistics in the data collection yeah and yeah so now I, I, we have reached the the end of this um this session and finally i would like to thank everybody for joining us and uh, joining us joining us in the session and uh, also a special thank to Tobion, who moderates the, the, the session, and to Anna, our coordinator. Yeah. And uh, thank you very much for your attention and your time. Yeah. Thank you very much, Tony Jen, for a very rich lecture that really contains a lot. Now we have uh, some 40 minutes for questions and answers if we want to. And as Anna said at the outset, uh, our attendees are welcome to, to, to give your questions orally if you so wish. Um, while we are waiting for questions, may I ra raise this? Since I, I know a little bit more about mainland, mainland Chinese uh, literature perhaps than Taiwan literature, I wonder about simplified characters. I think you said that Selma Lagerlöf, The uh, Wonderful Adventures of Nils, that your the edition that circulates in in Taiwan is in simplified characters. Was that right? Yeah. So the the yeah in the in 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 the, um, among, among the among the thirteen published entries of 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 sim, of simplified Chinese uh, uh, available in in that period of time, oh. most of the shares are uh, most of the most of the entries are the wonder wonderful adventures of Nils, and they are. They are, they are available in Taiwan according to the data indicated by the site www. I wonder what, what do you think? Do you think that simplified characters is a, a big hindrance to in Taiwan? Do, do people stay away from simplified characters or do they think that that's, that's quite all right? I think that um, People, the the, gen, the general public's attitude is quite natural. More, 
I, 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 I would presume that more of the readers regard works published in simplified Chinese as a, as a tool to receive more information and to get more information and to, to broaden their horizons. They do, the, the general public do not do, the, the general public do not regard this as a hindrance, but the public, the publishing houses, who more or less have the who more or less have the power to determine which should be translated and which should not be selected and translated, they may be more consciously further the the, the published translations of traditional Chinese. Yeah. Okay, um, I just uh, reflect that that uh, uh, converting uh, simplified characters to traditional characters is would be very simple. So from that point of view, it's a bit surprising that that uh, they yeah. have done so. Uh, we have received one written question yeah. um, uh, from Anna Gustafsson Chön, your colleague, so to speak. Yeah. He writes: Do you know how Swedish novels and children's books are received? Reviews, sales? Question marks. Yeah. Um, yeah. As far yeah, as far as I yeah, according accor according to my limited understandings, yeah, it's we can we can still we, we can still with security with security presume that um, it is still the more established and canonized authors like Austria Lindgren and Tova Youngson. That are that are best sought in Taiwan, and another and another author of Swedish children literature, who is um, Elsa Elsa Besko, I noticed that she has I noticed that she had been published frequently between two thousand fifteen and two thousand eighteen, and uh, the lifetime of Elsa Besko was from nine from 1870 to 1953. So these efforts to publish Elsa Besco between, 2000, between 2015 and 2018 in Taiwan, I would interpret this to be some efforts to pick up and uh, dig, dig a bit, say, say some, more, some more bigger names in Swedish children literature. That, that, may, that, that firstly were not as much known as um, Austria Dingren or Tova Jansson. So yeah, but I, I do not have, I, I have to admit that I do not have the most up updated statistics about sales of children literature books in, yeah, in, 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 in Taiwan. But, but, the, but the, the examples of the publications of Elsa Besco may be reasonably interpreted as an effort by, by the Taiwanese publishers to pick up some more names within this genre. Yeah. I see, thank you. Would you like to follow up that question, Anna, perhaps? Well, in the meantime, I have one follow-up question about uh, children's literature and about uh, Tove Jansson and Astrid Lindgren. The translations that circulate in Taiwan, are yeah. they, were they done by, by people in Taiwan or do you, do you mainly use the mainland Chinese translations? As far as I know, most, yeah, the, 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 the translators are, are, are Taiwanese and uh, yeah, they are, they are, they are, they are mother tongue users in, the, in this sense. And they may be either residing in Taiwan or in Sweden. So, yeah. This brings up another question that interests me and which I, I, I'm, I'm shamefully ignorant about, and that is the, the difference between the language in Taiwan and in mainland China. Yeah. It, it, it is, it is uh, mainland Chinese, uh, apart now from simplified characters, but it is the, the, the language used in, in mainland China, is that a hindrance to, to, to give, getting readers in Taiwan? Or, or I mean, are the difference so great that, that some people don't really like to read Chinese uh, written in mainland China? 
it has to be admitted and uh, pointed out that um, in terms of some expressions, yeah, the in, in terms of in terms of some expressions, yeah, there are there are diff there are differences there are differences between simplified and uh, traditional Chinese and such such phrases can such 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 examples can be found in in quite in quite many areas or domains in in daily life. So indeed, I would I would I would not I would not um, define this as a hindrance, but um, when Taiwanese readers get a simplified a, get, get a book in simplified Chinese book, first of all, there, 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 there may be some unfamiliarity. So it it requires some it requires some kind of reaction for the for the reader to set themselves into the context. But uh, but uh, but once the reading goes on, I would not I would not presume that it's a huge hindrance. So okay, now we have a question from an anonymous attendee who writes: Which Swedish writers' uh, works uh, ha who has have currently no traditional Chinese translations yet do you think should be introduced in? introduced into Taiwan. Can you name some names of the authors and works? Uh, this is a, uh, an attendee who is in the Netherlands. That is, in, in other words, what, what, which Swedish writers would you uh, suggest to be introduced to Taiwan? Uh, yeah, I, I would like to, yeah, 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 if, if possible, then um, uh, yeah, there there is there is a pair of um, authors who who, who earlier wrote wrote a couple of criminal novels who um, like uh, um, Rosalind and the Hailstrom. Yeah, so that they are they are they are the, the first the first of their work. Also the most one also the most famous one is called Tria Secunda. Three seconds. A different, a a a a, 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 crim, a criminal novel. So yeah, but um, it is also the only available translations of these two, of of these two authors. So if possible, I would prefer that um, other works written by this pair of Swedish authors, um, yeah, Ros Roslund and Hellström, that. That one or that more detective novels written by by them collectively, maybe can be translate can be introduced into traditional Chinese. So yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any more questions? You are all welcome. Then I would like to add one more question. I wonder: uh, Does the T Taiwan government? Has any program to promote the introduction of, of uh, literature from, say, Europe? So that, for instance, if you if you would like to to translate a book that you don't uh, think can become a bestseller, but you think it's it has high quality, could you apply to the government for funding? Um, yeah, as far as I know, the Taiwanese government do have. Uh, do have such subsidies for translation, but the attention from the attention from the Taiwanese government is mostly to promote Taiwanese literature being translated into European languages or English. So yeah. So as far as I know, the 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 focus of the Taiwanese government's efforts or subsidies go. Go just go just the opposite direction as you as you mentioned. So I I have to I have to do some more research work and to find out if the Taiwanese government also uh, also offers subsidies for translation projects completed from like Swedish or Norwegian to traditional Chinese. I I I, I haven't known such subsidies. But I, I will have to do some research research work and uh, get back to you. Yeah. Well, I, I think the data that you have 
yeah. introduced is very interesting in that it, it shows that, of course, I'm not a specialist in this. So if, if somebody, uh, Anna, for instance, would like to correct me, please do that. But it is my impression that the proportions of uh, between different uh, genres, say detective stories and, and uh, children's literature and more serious literature for, for adults, that these uh, proportions reflect reflect pretty well the situation in, in Sweden today. I mean, it seems now that detective stories are gradually perhaps overtaking uh, mm -hmm. children's literature. And to my mind, and again, I'm not very knowledgeable about this, but to my mind, first of all, children's literature is a very strong, strong field in, in Sweden. Comparatively, perhaps our best literature is children's literature. And there are a number of, of, of writers, many more than those uh, who have already been translated into in, and introduced in Taiwan. But, but still, this is very good. And at the same time, we can also see that the number of it, that detective stories is also becoming a major genre in Sweden. I mean, it's become much more so than it was only 30 or 40 years ago. So in that sense, your translations uh, seem to reflect pretty well the situation in, in Sweden. On the other hand, as, as a Swede, and, and I also think that, uh, again, that, that many of these works are very good. On, on the, but at the same time, one, one may also, without be sounding snobbish now, one may also miss some of our best, even more serious writers. I mean, somebody like Kerstin Ekman or P.O. Enqvist, I mean, two writers who are probably regarded as um, well, yeah. certainly belonging to our very best writers. Uh, have they not been translated to, as far as into, into Chinese? Uh, I, I, sus I suspect that Pierre Enquist, one, one of his books maybe has been translated, but yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. No, no, I suspect no. that one of Pierre Enquist's book yes. is available, but um, I'm not 100, I'm not 100 percent sure. Yeah. But just like your government is more interested in promoting yeah. uh, Taiwanese literature abroad, perhaps Sweden yeah. should also do more to promote translations into into Chinese in in Taiwan and in in the people in the Chinese in cultural China for that for that matter. Uh, okay, yeah. well, do we have any more questions? Then one more question about children's literature. I think uh, I, maybe this is a somewhat prejudiced, but I, I think that Swedish Nordic children's literature is, is really pretty advanced. And, and it, it is my impression that in Chinese culture as a whole, uh, children's literature has been lagging behind. I think it has developed at a quick pace in, in recent decades, but still it's uh, perhaps a bit lagging behind. Yeah. Uh, what is happening there? Do you think that the children's literature is ta being taken more and more seriously in, in Taiwan? I would, I think so. Yeah, because um, as you pointed, as you have pointed out, the traditions of children literature in a in a in Asia, yeah, the Chinese speaking areas have had has been traditionally weaker, and la and la and that's why it has to borrow something from the repertoires in European countries like Sweden or Norway by, by means of translation to, to try to first borrow something and then establish something, some groundwork and, and, for, and in, in hopes of that some authors will be cultivated and become available in the future. So yeah, but so the the, trans, the translations of Swedish and the North and Scandinavian children literature in Taiwan, it has been it it could be observed in in some decades. So I I would I would I would think that um, nowadays the status of children literature has been has been receiving more and higher status in Taiwan. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure if the if they are, if they also have been more na more native authors in Chinese literature but mm -hmm. the status of of this genre in Taiwan has has been rising yeah well, this is by no means surprising even if I, I think Swedish right Swedish culture was pre literature was pretty early in this regard but it has taken a long long time in Sweden also for children's literature to become 
to be properly recognized. I mean, even Astrid Lindgren, it took her a long time before she was considered as a really serious author. And I yeah. think there are still people who, who don't quite understand this. Uh, but this is an important phenomenon. Well, I don't know if I have any more questions or are there any other questions? If not, I think the time has come to wind up and, and let me then end by saying that I very much hope that you will, will, will uh, give us a written version, a written paper based on, on your talk. This is very interesting uh, information that you have uh, and an interesting analysis that you have presented it and it's really very much worthwhile to, to look at. And I, also in terms of relations between Taiwan and Sweden, I think it would be very worthwhile for the authorities, both in, in Taiwan and in, in Sweden, to promote more uh, exchange in the field of, of literature. So with these words, I, I would like, on, and on behalf of the St Stockholm China Center, I would like to thank you again, Tungjian, for a very interesting lecture. Thank you so much for your, for, for your assistance and uh, coordination as well. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And to our attendees, I would like to say welcome back to us. We will have more lectures on Taiwan this semester, although they have not been specified in time as yet. Um, and so our next lecture will be one in the series of China lectures. That will be uh, Mr. Nathan Law, who will, sp will speak on uh, the democracy movement in Hong Kong on February the 9th. You are most welcome back then to that lecture as you are to, will be to our other activities uh, in this spring and, and uh, during the rest of this year. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you also, Anna, for coordinating this. Thank you and see you soon again. Bye-bye.